Hello my squishies! It is six o'clock, it is Friday <laughs> and it is the new year! Uh, welcome! Uh, it's been a week, I'm a bit excitable, there will be lots of rambling today, I apologise in advance. Uh, so I record these live so we're just going to wait for somebody to come in and let me know that everyone can hear me and all that jazz and I'm getting really confused because I can see myself twice but I'm just going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> yes, so while we're waiting on someone coming in and saying that they can hear me and someone, I'm going to do a brief introduction to needle felting for those of you who have not needle felted before. Those of you who have, bear with me, we'll do this nice and quickly. Um, but yes, welcome. <laughs> there is a peanut asleep, a dog, dog called Peanut, asleep underneath my feet today. She's not in my pouch. Uh, she may wake up, so if I'm... Aha! I'm live. People can hear me. Excellent. If Peanut does wake up, I will pop her on camera or I might chase after her around the shop. <laughs> Either could happen. Who knows? She has had a very busy day in the shop, so she might sleep for this next hour. But uh, before we start, welcome. I've said that already. Uh, these are filmed live, but they stay up until <laughs> you did make it. We've made it. These stay up uh, after the fact, so you can watch afterwards. I am chatting to people in the chat replay, which is just down there. If you're watching this after the fact, I'm not just talking to myself, although it does sometimes feel like I am. And remember, you can mute me, so turn the volume off if you don't want to hear my rambling. You can fast forward, you can rewind, and you can slow me down. So if I'm doing anything too fast, just pop back a little bit or slow it down a little bit. Don't panic. I'm going to try and get this. Oh, I shouldn't have shown you what we're doing. Normally I hide what we're doing, but it's there today. <laughs> we're going to try and get this done in the next hour. Fingers crossed we should do. But so in your kit, if you're doing it from a kit, You messaged me on WhatsApp. Hello. I, uh, my phone's over there. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yes, because you are. Ah, yes, right. We'll get into that later. I, <laughs> I'm going to get not distracted for the first 10 minutes and then we can start the rambling. <laughs> but hello, I have been enjoying our messages. <laughs> so in your kit, you will have a foam mat. This is what we felt onto. It protects our surfaces and makes felting easier. So always felt on the format. You can see mine's been well used. It's got colour all over it and it's a little bit stabbed. We've also got our pre-felt, <laughs> which is the rambling. The nonsense gets stronger the longer these streams go on. Uh, the pre-felt, which is what we're going to felt onto. So this is Shetland Yep, Shetland wool that's been lightly felted and is ready to be more felted to turn it into a felt picture or actual felt. You can felt onto different, various different materials. That, see? <laughs> but you generally want to be able to stab them with the needle. So felt, pre-felt, some cottons, so some denims and things like that you can felt onto. And then next in our kit we have... Let's go for the needles, since I had one there. <laughs> so the needles are, let's put it right up to the camera. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, they're very sharp and barbed needles. Please try not to stab yourself. The needles can break. If they do break, make sure you find all the bits and dispose of it safely. I have a little plastic tub I pop them in. And then once that's full, I'll throw the tub out. Um, the, in our kit we have a needle holder which makes a needle slightly easier to hold if you prefer. I don't use it but they're there because loads of people really love using the needle holders so I'd give this a go. So to use this all you do is you pull out the peg there. Some of them already have a needle in it upside down. Take so that it'll be in that way. So ignore that. And what we're doing is we're putting the peg, putting the needle on the peg with the hook over the small end and then popping in that small end back 
into the holder. I'll do that one more time. So you've got your needle holder, you pull out your peg, pop the needle with the hook over the small end. So I'll hold it up so you can hopefully, hopefully see it. And then pop the small end in there and then that's what you're felting with. So this is a single needle holder. You do get, and I now have a demonstration one to show you guys, a multiple needle holder. So you can get them with, I don't have them, but they are available in other places. Uh, three, six, up to sort of 12. I think my biggest one is needle holder and that makes felting a little bit faster. I don't like to use these because when we're doing pictures, I want to have a lot more control, but they do exist if you want to speed things up. So I tend to though, just hold it one, two or three in my fingers and you'll see me rotating between the one, two and three. And last thing, is that the last thing? Oh, there's two more things in your kit. But the next, the most important thing in your kit is this stuff. This is the felt, the, no, this isn't the felt. This is a fiber that we're going to use to make the pictures. So most of this is Shetland. We've got a little bit of Chivia in here. It's wool. It's come off the sheep. It's been washed, dyed and brushed and is then ready to be made into pictures. There's a few tricks to working with this. Oh, and this is referred to as tops or roving. Uh, essentially interchangeable, although there are, there are nuances. Oop, get in frame. So when we're working with this, if I grab one end and just pull a little bit, you'll see easily I can pull out this little section. And this little section is the full length of the hair of the wool that was on the sheep. So if you have your hands too close together, you're pulling on eat the same bit of, ya of yarn. Of <laughs> it's been a week. Happy New Year. Um, the same bit of the roving. And it's not going to come apart. But if you have your hands nice and far apart, you can see you can just pull out little bits like this. And also if there's any twist in it, it's also not going to pull because twist is what makes yarn, yarn essentially. So you want to make sure it's untwisted, have your hands nice and far apart. And I'm just pulling with this hand and holding with this hand. And you'll hear me say this multiple times. We're going to, less is more with the needle felting and with my needle, with my personal technique. Some people do it different ways. There's no right and wrong. For me, less is more. And I'm going to be building up layers, little layers, to create depth and to create the picture. And also in your kit, we're almost there, is the frame that we're going to put around. But I'll show you how to do the frame nearer the end. But right, before we start, uh, I have, there's two questions. Yes, your kit is in the post. It should be with you hopefully tomorrow. Um, I just checked if it's not there already, it should be tomorrow. And I did not dye this myself. I wish I had the time. I have all the things to do the dyeing, but uh, apparently running a shop is uh, takes a lot of time. Nobody told me this, time and paperwork. Who did this? Running a yarn shop. I love it though, don't get me wrong. Um, no, I did not dye it, but it's all British wool. Most of it, as I say, is Shetland. This is Cheviot um, and this is undyed as well. But OK, are we ready to rumble? So I've drawn the circle on for you and in the kits, I, the finished kits I put out, I also will have drawn an outline of what it will look like when we're finished. So you can just do in the lines. I haven't drawn an outline on mine because I haven't quite finalised the design. We might do. <laughs> a few variations on this today and then that'll be the final design but so this is i hope everybody can see we're doing this is the silver sands of mora seen from above we're like a bird <laughs> a bird's eye view today 
I'm going to start, normally I say we start from the back and work to the front, so the furthest away thing, like the hills, and then work forward. Because we're looking down, there essentially isn't much to... There's no far away and close because it's all the same, except we're going to do one little thing differently this time, which I haven't done in this, so this is slightly experimental. But I want to make this grassy area slightly raised up. So where the grass is going to be, I'm going to split off a little bit of the, this is the slivers, which is the fluffier white achievement slivers. Split off a little bit and put it to the side. Don't use this because that's going to be used later. But I'm going to place this down around the edge like that and just lightly felt it in. So when I'm felting, I'm going straight down and up or straight on an angle and up. I don't want to be bending my needle at all because when you bend your needle that's when it's more likely to break. So I've just popped a tiny bit of this in and really loosely, you saw I did like five or six stabs, stabbed it in and that's going to give us a little bit of height to the beach. <laughs> Thank you! I got my to-do list that is blank at the moment because all I have to do tonight is this and then have dinner. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we are, yeah, so we've made this little ridge essentially and then I'm going to sketch out where the beach is going to go. So the really nice thing that I haven't mentioned about this felting, for those of you who haven't done it before, is that I can put stuff down and even if I've lightly felted it in at this point, I can still pull it up and move it because we're going to, at the moment, we're just tacking stuff in like in, in sewing, you would do a tacking stitch or in painting, you would do a sort of base layer roughing it out. So that's what we're doing just now. So I'm going to put my beach in where I want my beach to go. I think this one's going to have more of a curve than the other one. So I'm just going to tack that beach colour down there and then again I'm going to grab the sea blue and to put the sea blue where I want my beach to go. Now your beach can look... <laughs> How can I see the white? Uh, that's a very good question. I can't but when you hold it at an angle you can see the the fluff is staying up and the beach is the cream colour so it might not show up properly on camera but that is a cream rather than a white there but don't worry we're going to cover up this white it's going to be covered up with green I'm just I'm just putting a base of <laughs> so that this is going to end up being a little bit higher and a little bit as if it's a hill so with your C and just the shape of your beach, you do, ah, yes, that one, this one is cream, this one is white. Where was I? Yes. <laughs> the nonsense, the nonsense. With the shape of your beach and your C, you have the options. You don't have to follow what I'm doing here. You can, like on this one, I've got a fatter beach. I'm going to do a thinner beach here just to see the difference because the tide goes in and out. There's there's lots of variation. So there's no right and wrong with how you're doing it. But so my beach is my very, in fact, let's do measurements, is about the thickness of where the needle stops being triangular and starts being round. My hill is about double that, and then C just goes up to the edge. But I'm reasonably happy with that. Let's pop the green in and see how we like this shape. So I'm going to, just for just now... Oh no, please, 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 ask all of the questions. I very, very much appreciate any questions everybody has, because there's some things that I don't think about. There's lots of things I don't think about. My brain's not always working. But, there's, <laughs> but specifically in the context of this, there's some things I just wouldn't even imagine 
that I haven't explained properly. So I really, really appreciate all the questions. There was no wrong question. So I've just taken the, the frame and I'm going to lay it over to have a look and see how my there's a word what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> see how my layout there we go my layout's looking you can also when it's finished you don't have to have it so you could have it like that there are many options but I quite like that shape with a nice little thin bit of sea that, of uh, sand there so I'm going to tack this down slightly I don't tend to felt in the frame if I've framed it and there is a little something that I want to change I will occasionally stab in the frame but the problem with felting in the frame is the frame is a little bit thick and when you're felting, you want the fabric to be touching this mat. So this is actually, that's a very, very good question. So if I was to felt with, let's pop this in the frame, with this in the frame on the mat, that's going to bow that in and, the, and it's going to bow in while you're felting it. So I always felt it um, flat, and then pop it in the frame. And, ooh, do you guys want to be in on my guilty, guilty? It's not a guilty little secret, but a little secret that I do that, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to tell you. No, surprisingly, it's not easier in the frame. It's a, a little bit, it's, it's annoying, I've, I've tried, and it moves everything. <laughs> so when I am... Um, uh, doing finished ones like this if I'm going to sell a finished one I got a circle a bit of wood put it on the back and then stuff it full so this is actually stuffed full of recycled wool stuffing to give it a bit of a domed up roundy effect but uh, yeah these don't come in the kits because they're quite hard to come by so they're a uh, they're my secret. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, so I'm going to lightly felt these blocks of colour in and then we're going to start adding in some detail and some texture and make sure you go over the lines. So if you don't go... Ah, your kit had that. Excellent. If you don't go over the lines when you go to pop it in the frame you might see some bits of white at the edges okay so i'm now going to take this darker blue and pop this fading in so that's where the deeper bit of sea is is going to be darker blue and the lighter bit of sea is going to be up by the edge but I'm so I'm layering down a thinnish layer but I'm going to take some blue and lay that on top before I even felt anything down this is the lovely thing about felting is that you can layer it and have a look at it and see what it looks like before you even felt it in so this is blending those two nicely and you can even add more on top because the more you layer up the more sort of depth you get and especially so at the moment it looks a bit fuzzy it looks a bit messy which it will do it's going to look odd there's no, there's no there's no fighting it it's gonna look weird it's gonna look terrible not terrible but excitable and the more we stab it in the more it'll come together and the more little things you add the more depth i keep saying depth the more interest like all these little variations 
makes such a difference. Oh, and remember, uh, is it Ava or Eva? I don't know which one. Uh, person I'm chatting to in the comments. Um, you can, if you've missed bits of me, you can still rewind the live one. Don't worry about that. And after the fact, everyone else that's watching later on, you can rewind me as well. Do not, if you need a break, if it's too much, if you can't stand my rambling, you can mute me. Okay, so we've got some nice darker blues in there. It looks a bit messy just now, don't worry. We're gonna be adding more later. We're gonna take that little bit of the white cheviot slivers, the fluffier one, the one that's different from the rest. And we're gonna start putting in some waves because this makes amazing waves. So I'm going to just lay this where the beach meets the sand. Oh, I might reserve my right to change. I am, I'm reserving my right to change my mind. See, this is this is why felting is so good. I can just pull that off. Before I put the waves on, we're gonna do a little bit of dark sand. So beaches, the tide comes in and out. I'm correct in that assumption. Please say I'm correct in that assumption. <laughs> So where the water is nearest to the, is just been over the sand, you're gonna have little wet dark patches of sand. So I'm gonna add in some of the darker. It's a camel color. And remember, we're not just adding a little, we're gonna layer it. So I'm going to fade that up the beach a little. So did you see how little I took there? So just, can you even see that? Oh no, you didn't, you didn't get the alert. Hello Robin, it's good to see you. Happy New Year. We've already been doing nonsense without you, but I, I hope now the nonsense will, uh, the nonsense will intensify. <laughs> oh, and yeah, while you're, <laughs> Here. Remind me to tell you, <laughs> you've, not, you've not much missed much. You're fine, don't worry. Um, there is a bit of nonsense. I've not been saving it specifically, but I've just remembered that I uh, need to tell you about what we're felting today. But before that, every so often, uh, you need to pull this off of the mat. You have a look at the back and see all your felted goodness that you're doing. And it might distort the picture. That's totally fine because at the moment it's still quite malleable. And you can see there's movement in there. So you can just reshape it to the shape it was. But once it's once we've properly felted it in like this one here, there's a lot less movement. You can feel it's a lot stiffer. That's how you know essentially when it's... I don't even want to say when it's properly felted in. That's the wrong use of words. But yes. Once it's felted in as much as you would like to felt it in. Okay, so hopefully you didn't miss much. You can rewind me if you want, but we just put in some blue there with like not lots of nice layers. And now we're putting in some layering up the sand. So we're doing today the Silver Sands of Mora which is a wonderful beach up near Ashig and the sand uh, sa um, up, well up near Mora which is near Arasig not Ashig Arasig and Malig which is just up the end of the railway line from here gorgeous up there the sands are so silver white and the beaches are amazing any excuse I will go up there for a day at the beach. Peanut loves it up there. In fact, all dogs love it up there because it's just silver sands for miles. But uh, oh, it must have been five, five new years ago now. Uh, I went up 
to the Silver Sands on, I don't think it was New Year's Eve, but very close to New Year's Eve with a load of work friends that, where I was working. And we had a bonfire on the beach. And so this was December, beginning of January time. Three of us ran in. This was the first time I'd actually gone cold water swimming. Ran in, dunked in the wonderful ice cold and then ran out again and sat and warmed up in front of the fire. So how do, oh, good question. How do you know if there's too much felt in one spot? You don't, <laughs> essentially. So I'm doing lots of nice layers and I'm gonna aim to have the finished picture essentially apart from this bit here. So all this is gonna be like the same kind of thickness. So you can kind of feel how much you're adding in. We want this bit to be thicker because I want this to be more of a hill coming down. But you can have thick and thin bits, it really doesn't matter. There's essentially no... I want to say there's no such thing as too much felt in one spot. If you want there to be felt there, then it should be there. If not, then take it away. That's a terrible answer and I apologise. Um, I don't have an example here, but there are some pictures I've got where if you actually feel the f <laughs> if you actually feel the felt you can feel I've got bits where I've put more colour in and less colour and in the final picture you, nobody sees it it's only if you've decided to take it down off the wall have a good feel because if this is just going to be on the wall as long as it looks right to you then it's right was that, was that an okay answer? <laughs> and remember, you can always, especially just now, because we haven't put too much on, if you've got a bit that you're feeling is like there's a little bit too much felt, or fibre even, you can pull it off and start again. And even if it is well felted in, there is this, you can pull it to a certain extent and chop it. I didn't say this, but I have occasionally, if I've really hated something, I think I've even done it on stream once, <laughs> really hated it where I've put something, I like pull it, pull it, pull it, and then just chop it off and then cover it with a little bit of fresh colour. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Oh, and I forgot to say, I'm going back. So this is the slivers. We're now doing the breakwater, the water that is joining on where the sand meets the waves. Oh, we're making the waves. So I'm going to do one long one that goes the whole length of where it meets. And then we're going to put in a pop in. <laughs> we're going to pop in. <laughs> far from a perfect answer, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Pop in some smaller ones. So these are just little itty bitty waves that are crashing because it does get wavy and these little waves just add texture and depth to your picture okay so we've done yeah do what she said <laughs> I, I bow down to the robin. That's a much better answer than what I said. So I'm going to work on the grass. Now remember this bit isn't finished. We're just, <laughs> just working through. So I'm going to fill in my grass. Now this, when we're felting this, it is going to flatten down. So don't worry about keeping it too puffy. Or if you have more colours that you want more slivers or more colours that you want to hide you can just like fill this in with different ones so I'm putting my light green there and then we're going to make some trees <laughs> here till 11 I'm going to be gone by 11 
I'm going to be, I'm going to be having, by 11 o'clock, who am I kidding? I'm going to be in bed asleep at that point because <laughs> I'm an old lady and I love it. Um, so I'm going to take the darker green and put in some texture, some trees, some patches of grass, but I'm going to work first again where the grass meets the sand. And I'm going to this time, instead of laying everything flat, which essentially we've been doing so far, so, so far, <laughs> I'm going to scrumple it up. So I'm scrumpling this up into a, a messy shape because I don't want this to look I want this to have a bit of texture in it because this is the trees and the bushes <laughs> yeah, don't want, oh my god I am not here till 1.30 I will definitely be asleep by that point Oh my, different time zones. Okay, fair. I'll be here. <laughs> Wait, way up from the map, way up from the map what? It'll get wavy? What'll well, get wavy? Oh, I mean it will kind of... Uh... Nope, I'm confused. <laughs> Does not... The computer has broken. Please re-answer question. Oh, more scrumple, more scrumple. Because especially, um, what? Oh, you people with your late, late nights. And now I'm going to add. So this time I'm taking the green, and I am going to. just over the whole area. So I've done my like concentrated forest at the forest at the edge there. I'm going to add a little bit of green all over and then do some more trees and scrubs. I just want to have different textures and depth. Have I ever done portraits? I've done animals. I have not done oh interesting sorry I've not done people in felt. So I was home at Christmas time and mum and dad are not on the stream today. Normally they're my tech support. Apparently they're having a holiday this month. Most upset about this. Uh, but that means we can talk about them. Uh, I, was at, I was at home for Christmas and my parents made me go through my art school portfolio. And this, so this was, oh my God, how many years ago was I art school? 20, 20 years ago. Um, and been anything that we didn't want to keep. And I went through them all and I found some of my old self portraits. And 17 year old me had a weird impression of herself. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> so maybe one day we will do a self portrait or a portrait, but <laughs> no, no, no. Oh no. <laughs> right. <laughs> Before I get too distracted. Let's see how we're looking. Yes. So we've got, because we've gone over the edge of the circle, we've got options of moving it around and having different layouts. But I really am pretty happy with that one there. That's coming, that's looking nice and beachy and sea -y. So I'm going to put in some more. <laughs> some of my drawings, I've actually kept three of them. I'm still proud of to this day. And we went through mum's art school portfolio as well. And I've kept a good few. Of, I've asked to keep a few of hers as well. Because my mum is a wonderful artist. She's not even here listening to hear this compliment. Oh, hello, Sylvia. Oh, I saw you in our Facebook group. Is this, is this the right person? The, oh, hello. My light just turned off. How exciting. Hold on, let's see if I can turn the light back on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, yes, it, yes, it is you. Excellent. Oh my God, your puffin is amazing. It is wonderful. I saw it today when I logged in and it's so awesome. And all the embellishments. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, if you guys don't follow me in on Facebook, we have a Facebook group for these where people post finished ones and is it it's Sylvia? Sylvia 
posted one of a puffin that she did and it is awesome um yes there is what uh, who did the dog it was margaret i think that did the dog portraits she's done some awesome dog portraits and posted them in the facebook group as well so yes dog portraits how are you how are you planning on doing them have you got have you got a plan should we <laughs> should we do it together <laughs> i'm just adding in lumps of grass so i'm scrumfling up and sorry i know i realized i was just chatting to people in the comments now i've forgotten i'm actually supposed to be felting i'm putting in little trees and bushes if you want to do a path so i did try a path uh last time when i was doing this but i ripped it out and took it away but you we might uh, near the end we can try putting a path in Oh yeah, oh is it, wait, is it Ava or Eva? But yes, post post pictures in the group as well. We love pictures. I've totally forgotten what I was doing. I was reading the comments. <laughs> I'm checking, checking where it is. And yes, yeah, so we could put a wee path going there, but we'll do that later. We'll keep, we'll keep felting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do two or three minutes of just full felting all over, stabby, stabby, stabbying, just to felt it all in a bit and see how, what areas I want to work on and add more colour and depth. Because I'm pretty happy with where everything is just now, but we want to see how it's going to look when it's finished. Now, to go back to oh images are great to work from never be afraid to trace uh because it just makes life so much easier i probably shouldn't say that that's probably not an art artist thing to do but tracing blocking in colors yeah there's no right and wrong just do it what was i saying oh i had to i had to <laughs> Oh, oh, no, don't make it up to me. I can't make decisions. <laughs> pick, pick one. <laughs> I'm not going to felt too much on this. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm not going to felt too much on this, but because I want it to remain slight, pretty 3D. So your picture... That's a good idea, Robin. You can also, uh, I've got some wash away fabric that's really thin. You could trace it on that, pop that on top of the felt and then felt onto it. And then when you give it a quick wash and it'll all dissolve. But yes, I like your iron on idea. Yeah, just pop it on a wool setting. Yeah. Oh. Back to, uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this thought out. Come on, thought we can do this. <laughs> Your picture can be as felted or as non-felted as you like. There's only a few caveats. So there's no right and wrong amount of felting to do on a picture. If you like the way it looks, then it's felted. Then you're that's fine. If it's going to be in a high touch area and people are going to be fingering it and doing stuff with it then I would felt it slightly more, make sure it's nice and stiff. But if it's say behind a frame and it's never going to get touched and you want like nice loose, non stabby stabby marks, then do it. You don't have to felt that that strong. You have options. There's no, as long as it fits for the purpose that you're going to use it for. So like the ones in the shop, I go over them a lot I in fact have a you can't see this but right here I have a embellisher machine with 12 needles and most of the time I'll go over them once I finish them I go over them with the embellisher for a couple of minutes because they'll be in the shop and they're going to be constantly 
handled. People like people like to squish things in my shop and I fully encourage it. So you can put your yeah, you can put your your picture under glass in a frame if you like. I don't because I really like it in just the hoop and I like being able to touch it and squish it because I'm a very tactile person and I want to be able to squish things. Um, but yeah, no, you can definitely put them behind glass. You can get, you can do it in a box frame or you can have it like squished right under the glass. Okay, I want to put a couple more details. This edge, I love it, but it needs a little bit more interest. So, and I reserve the right to change my mind about this. I'm going to put a little bit, a couple of bushes, just like popping forward like that. So there's like little, because when there's like dunes up here, especially there's lots of sand dunes and there's like sandy paths that you, where the sand goes up behind little outcrops of bushes and things. So I'm going to pop a few, make a few of them. And nothing's like perfect and set in stone. Yeah, a box frame would be lovely. In fact, do I have a box? Oh, I've got a box frame over there. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to put them in the kits, but I've, oh, I've remembered the thing that I really have to tell you all. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> maybe one day we'll do uh, a box frame framing. When did I find felting? That is a very good question. Was it before I started the shop or after I started? I must have done it before I started the shop. Just as a something I, you know how you pick up hobbies and you're like, oh, I'm going to try this and then never really do much about it, but you've tried it. So I've done it like that before I started the shop. But when I started the shop, I wanted, to... oh, I know what it was. We were doing online classes and felting was one of the nice ones that I could do online, like knitting and stuff was a little bit more difficult. So I was like, right, no, let's, let's properly get into this felting malarkey and did a bit of research and a bit of time felting and then started doing classes for the college online. This was Nope, that's complete lies. Complete lies. I started doing kits. Because I had the all the yarn for the Oh my god, this is a rambling answer. I am so sorry. <laughs> I had the kits <laughs> in the shop because I was making kits and just printing out the instructions and then Oh my god. Uh about four years ago, let's just, easy answer, about four years ago I probably started felting. <laughs> oh, it's really good for your fine motor skills and especially the flat felting, It you're a lot less likely to stab yourself, which is really handy. When you're doing 3D felting, I find I stab myself a lot more, but flat felting is, yeah, so fun and you can be so creative. You see here, I'm... Sorry, just to jump back. I'm doing lots of like wiggles around the edge and I've even got a wee path sort of starting to form here where as if people who are coming from wherever they've come from. So there's, if, so this is Silver Sands of Yeah, so this is really good for fine water skills and yeah also just getting your anger out. Stabbing for an hour is, I love it when I do in-person classes and we stab for an hour and everybody is so amazingly relaxed afterwards. It's brilliant. Um, no, yep, we're gonna, we're gonna jump back. I'm gonna finish my thought, we can do this. <laughs> oh, you just saw my head. I thought I'm wearing a hat because it's cold in here. Um, so this is Silver Santa Moore. So there's a path that goes it starts off, these are the dunes, sort of sandy, grassy dunes. 
and then it goes through a forest and then there's a car park here so this is the path that you would take in but it's like through the trees and it's lovely although it's sand all the way to the car park actually which is really fun and the car park is sandy but there's just grass everywhere around it Yeah, three no 3D, although I am, this is the big news, going to be doing 3D uh, ones. I, I, I don't want to say prefer, but I much prefer doing it flat because there's so much less stabbing of your fingers. Right, we're wiggling this path all the way. We're going to put the path in now. I'm feeling bold and feeling brave. We can do this. Wiggling this path all the way off the edge. So the exciting, kind of exciting scary news is I'm an idiot and the shop has gone a little bit quiet because it's winter and this is expected. So I've decided to give myself <laughs> finger covers. Now, people swear by finger covers, but I have stabbed myself through the finger covers to the point where I bleed because I'm less careful about where I put my needles. So I don't use them because I <laughs> am an idiot. No, because <laughs> then I'm more <laughs> aware of stabbing myself whereas when I've got finger covers on I just stab and then it goes right through and it really hurts but that's just me and don't listen to I'm an idiot I, I know I'm trying not I'm especially trying not to hate on 3d because yes I will get to the end of this thought I apologize for everybody that's watching this for the first time and you bought one of the kits in my shop welcome to the rambling nonsense of felt along on a Friday uh, I'm going to start doing two streams a month. Yes, you can now hang out with me for two Fridays a month, if you like. The first Friday of the month and the third Friday of the month, I am going to be doing streams. Uh, around the edge of this path that I've just done, I'm going to take the darker green and do little trees as well. Um, so, first, Saturday, first Friday, have I been saying Thursday or Friday? First Friday of the month is going to be the usual, <laughs> yeah, more shenanigans, is going to be the usual 2D uh, felt along with the kit sent out to you guys that are regular subscribers. So you'll get your kit posted out as usual. I'm so sorry, Margaret. Uh, it's in the post tomorrow. I'm an idiot. Um... But on the third, I can't say these words, third Friday of the month, I'm going to be doing one that doesn't have a kit associated with it being sent out, but there will be a kit in the shop after the fact. And we're going to be doing 3D things. So you're going to hear a lot more of me trying not to swear as I stab myself in the finger. Um, and I want to tell you what... I've got planned. Hold on. They're on my phone. Da, 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 da. So we have planned, because apparently I did some planning. The first one is going to be a 3D thistle. Then we're hopefully going to do a cow. We're going to do a Nessie. We're going to do a robin. A sheep and a haggis is the ones that we've planned that we me and Peanut, the dog, have planned out. I'm very, in fact, I might do the Nessie first. Maybe, ne yeah, I'm very, I'm just so excited to do the Nessie one. So there's going to be, you're going to have me two, two nights a month. Oh my God, can you handle the nonsense? Probably not, and that's okay. Oh, there might be there there I, there might be a robin. Although <laughs> the the, the robin, 
I do. I'm afraid at the moment I don't ship to the USA. The it is just madness. Um, with all the post office and things, but I am working on a way to fix that. So watch this space. We might be able to. That's what I'm hoping to. One of the many things I'm going to be doing this new year is get that all sorted out so that I can post outside the UK again because I really miss being able to do that and I hate the fact that most of my emails are like I am so sorry I cannot post outside the UK at this moment in time but we're working on it so our little path with this nice little wiggle is coming up nicely and the nice the, the other thing about this path that we haven't mentioned um is because oh i'm actually really happy with this ah oh, oh my god right okay because i've been stabbing on that path a little bit more that's indented and this area that we've left unstabbed most of the time is puffed up and it looks really nice and 3d so it looks like it's actually little hills i know you can't see it on the camera because it's flat but <laughs> i promise in real life, when you're doing this, if you did fill it underneath there with the slivers, then it's going to be this little 3D puffs. And it's so fun. Okay. So this path is totally allowed to be felted in. I'm still leaving this bit reasonably unfelted. And what else do I want to work on? So I've got this is coming in nicely. Really happy with how the beach is looking. Oh, you couldn't hear me. Uh, if I move my mic, is that any better? So I don't at the moment, but I'm working very hard to rectify that so that I should in the very near future be able to post outside of the UK. So watch this space. Okay, I think it's time we do a first try in the try in the in the frame. So I'm gonna pull it off, and I can feel it's tighter already with all that stabbing. And then move your mat away. Pop. Oh, so let's before we do that to work the frame. You just unscrew this until it's not quite all the way out if you do pull it all the way out that's not a problem just screw it back in again put your oh no too fast put the inside on the ground the ground oh my god put the inside on the table I can do words pop your felt on top and have a feel where the hoop is and decide if that's where you want the hoop to go and if it's not you can just move it so I can feel the hoop there and then I'm going to scooch that down so I've pushed it down but it will pop up again so what I do is pop up to the edge of the table and then move it over like that so how does that look so when you pop it in the frame is there anything so stand back and have a look from far away it's a really good idea to take a photograph of it and send it to either yourself or to someone else i normally send it to my parents and go normally my first question is what is this and then they guess what on earth it is i've designed and after that, it's normally what what would you change? Um, because it's really good to have a second opinion and see if other people have spot anything that you might not spot. And also, although today we don't need to too much, normally I say don't finish it today. After we finish, we're going to fill it for another about five or ten minutes. Then put it aside for a day or two and then come back in a day or two Give it a good felting all over. See if there's any little things you want to change and then properly 
proper, properly frame it. So to properly frame it, you get it in, make sure it's all nice, and then you're tightening up the screw until you can't tighten it any further. And once that's all nice and tight and it's not gonna move anywhere, so don't do this today, do this in a couple of days, you can chop off all this extra. So just chop it all off. And because you've tightened it nicely, it's not gonna go anywhere. Why do I have one? Uh, not within reach. And then it's ready to hang. Oh, going. But yeah, don't. This isn't finished yet. So the frames come in my kit. I get them from my wholesaler. But you can get them. So a few places. So most craft shops will have the frames. They're just embroidery hoops. You can also get them from if you live in the UK. I've spotted them in home bargains for like a, a couple of pounds um, or you can get them on like Amazon, Etsy and places like that. They're just, these are six inch embroidery hoops. You can get multiple sizes, different sizes, depending on what size you want your picture to be. But I do stock them in the shop and I sell them in the kits. So if you're buying a kit off me, there should be a frame in it. So is there, any, is there anything I've forgotten? Any other questions? We've got about 10 minutes left. I'm gonna stab a few, a little bit more just to lock it all in because this is gonna be a high use item. Yeah, home bargains uh, normally in there. So I don't know if all stores are the same, but in Home Bargains up in Fort William, because we have our Home Bargains, uh, which is very exciting. It only opened up a year or two ago. Oh, it's changed our life up here. Um, up the back left-hand corner, next on the aisle with all the, like, towels and toilet rails and things like that, there is a small crafting section where they have embroidery hoops and needles and some wool and things like that. And Peanut has stayed asleep the whole time. She is passed out. We were playing fetch in the shop with customers for a good while today and she was having a wonderful time. There was sort of four of us, uh, three of us, four of us, sitting on the floor with our legs out and she was <laughs> using them as hurdles to go back and she was having a wonderful time. Uh, so I, th I think she's a very tired puppy tonight. Also, just, I don't know how geeky you guys are. And we're about to end the stream so I can tell you this now. Don't tell, I mean, you can tell the people if you like, but I'm thinking of doing lots of these with like different, this isn't for the shop, this is just for me, uh, with different landscapes for my Dungeons and Dragons campaign and <laughs> putting the little players around and having this as like the map of a Dungeons and Dragons game because I'm that cool. And I was at Dungeons and Dragons last night because we've got a group, a couple of groups up here. And I was like, I want to do a needle felted mat. Is that wrong? Okay, I think I'm happy with this. I know it, it's Dungeons and Dragons and needle felting. What could this combination just <laughs> will be perfect. I'll put it in the Facebook group if I do it. But I'm going to frame this up for the final shot and then it is dinner time, I think. So again, we're going to pop it and I can feel where the frame is. And you can, if you want, you can put it like, let's do a few examples. You can have it like that with the beach at the top. You can have it like that with the beach at the bottom. In fact, ooh, maybe for this final shot, I'm going to put, oh, do D&D, play D&D. 
It's amazing. We healed the soup yesterday and it was spectacular. Don't ask. It was a confusing story, but it was amazing. Oh yeah, you can even have it at the top like that. It's a beach at the bottom. All the options are yours. There's no right and wrong way to frame this. I think I'm going to... Am I going to... There we go. So I'm just going to tighten this up. And again, this isn't totally finished. I'm still going to go back in a couple of days and spend a good 10, 15 minutes just stabbing all over, putting in a few little details, working maybe on the path and things like that. But for just now, let's hold it up to the camera. Oh, where are we? There we go. Needle felted silver sands of Mora. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been such a fun stream. It's lovely to meet, to have new people in the stream as well. So it's not, because <laughs> me and Robin normally are the troublemakers and there's sensible people making comments. But today I feel like we've all been troublemakers and it's been so much fun. So I will see you, not next, well, yes, next month, but I'll see you in two weeks with either Nessie or a thistle. I haven't decided which one. Nessie or thistle. One of the two. But thank you for joining me, my squishies. Have a lovely rest of your evening. And I will see you in two weeks. Ciao!